I don't know. <laughs> okay, everyone. We're down to the clap drill now. I don't have. Okay. I would uh, first. I want to welcome to start us off officially is Dr. Rana Joy. Rana is associate dean for graduate studies and research, and uh, and she's going to uh, do a land acknowledgement which is something we, we do is becoming more common across Canada now. And she's also going to bring uh, greetings on behalf of the faculty. Rhonda? Uh, before I even begin, I want to comment on the, the dresses, the outfits. They are beautiful. They're so colorful. And I, as I walked in earlier, I heard the comment about uh, having Sami language more prevalent. Someone mentioned that. And it just reminds me of our indigenous um, uh, people in Newfoundland and how the language for them has become so important and um, trying to hold on to that piece of culture and heritage. Um, you know, so we're working on it here as well. Uh, I wanted to just welcome everybody, take a minute on behalf of the Faculty of Education and welcome everyone uh, to this event this afternoon and for taking the time to uh, participate in the panel to our, our guests here in front of me. And uh, also to our guests from Sammy University, um, welcome. And I hope that you are enjoying your stay. Um, the weather, well, I don't know what the weather is like at home for you. <laughs> we have sun and the wind has been less. So I think that that's a really good thing for you, believe it or not. You might need your winter coat, uh, but it's certainly, uh, it's certainly kind of June weather for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so welcome. I hope you get a chance to do some exploring around the city. It is a beautiful city. And uh, I hope one of these days I get to head up your way. It's on my bucket list. So I hope in the future I'll get to travel there. I want to take a minute right now as well to just do a, a land acknowledgement before turning it over to Dr. Anderson. Um, we respectfully acknowledge the territory in which we gather as the ancestral homelands of the Beothic and the island of Newfoundland as the ancestral homelands of the Mi'kmaq and Beothic. We would also like to recognize the Inui of Nunatsivut and Nunatukavut and the Innu of Natatasanen, always have trouble with that one, and their ancestors as the original people of Labrador. We strive for respectful relationships with all peoples of this province as we search for collective healing and true reconciliation and honor this beautiful land together. So on that note, Dr. Anderson, over to you. Thank you, Dr. Joy. Uh, just a, a couple comments. Uh, we are on Facebook Live, and uh, I did send feeds out to the Verity Network and to a few other networks. and. Uh, it may well be recorded, uh, and there are people, it could be as far from Israel to northern Norway to uh, uh, to other places around the world, So, and Alaska. Um, the, uh, this is called the Morning Watch Dialogue Series, and for those who don't know, the Morning Watch is an in-house journal that was started by our retired colleague, Dr. Amarjit Singh, about 50 years ago. Our 50th anniversary is next year. and. Uh, we, the most, our, our most recent two editions have been heavily focused on the Pan-Arctic community. And, and a lot of people that are uh, active in, in your own research and your own communities are there. Uh, the, the spring edition of 2021 was co-edited by Sylvia Moore at the Labrador Institute and Jennifer Godfrey Anderson, who's here at, at, by the month. And the next edition coming out is co-edited by Kathy Snow from the University of Prince Edward Island and myself. Uh, the focus is on teacher education. It is on North. It is on student res resilience as well. And uh, we have Russia's, uh, writers from Russia right across the Pan-Arctic region to uh, Canada, to Alaska, and we're there. So uh, if you ever want to find that, just Google Morning Watch Mun, M-U-N, and Sami people should understand the word Mun fairly well, right? Or Moon, right? So, so uh, I learned the Sami word yesterday. Moon meaning me? Is that right? Mm -hmm. Did I get close at all, or I'm, going, I'm, I'm giving everybody a chuckle again? Okay. All right. Uh, it is also our faculty's 100th anniversary. And one of the things I, I like to remind people of is 100 years ago, Sir Wilfred Grenfell had hosted uh, at, in a, 
an economic development uh, uh, activity in northern Newfoundland and Labrador where they brought in 500 reindeer from your region, your ancestors, brought them in and they came in as herders, as, as technical experts and worked with local people to develop the reindeer herd. Now the reindeer herd failed, uh, but it actually did get up to around 1,000. It su succeeded initially and oh, the Sammy got homesick and some went home because the weather was a little cold and a little harsh. But it, it seems, and I, I don't have a full record of this, but when the Sammy left, the herd started to diminish. And poaching was a problem, so that was an issue. But eventually what was left of the herd wound up in, uh, I think it's the Peace River area near the Northwest Territories. Mm -hmm. And some of the people who were taking care of it, the McNeils from, uh, from McCovic and uh, Andersons from McCovic, and uh, actually wound up living in northern Newfoundland or in Peace River. So there, there's a, mo and, and Leela's from, from McCovic, that's why I, I'm pointing to her. So there's a connection there. And it was really interesting a couple of years ago to meet a, Mc, a McNeil, uh, whose ancestors were from McCovic, who now lives in that region because of the reindeer. And if you live in Newfoundland and Labrador, if you live in northern Scandinavia or North, Nordic countries, and we are all reindeer people. Whether you're Mi'kmaq, Inuit, or Sami, we have a common aff affiliation with the caribou and the reindeer. That makes us all reindeer people. We have that uh, that, that bind that binds us as well as the north. Uh, I want to bring greetings on behalf of the president. I received this message a little while ago and uh, wanted to wait until we were all together to use it. And uh, so, so President Diane Simmons, again, who's also of Mi'kmaq ancestry, and Diane and our, and our dean are actually in Nunavut right now. Yesterday they were playing baseball. And today they're actually having meetings and doing convocation, I think. Um, so President uh, Timmons says, welcome everyone. I am sorry I'm unable to meet you in person, but I wanted to extend a warm welcome to Memorial University and to Newfoundland and Labrador. I have a long-standing engagement with the URT community and commitment to Indigenous education. I am particularly happy to see colleagues from the Sami University and the Faculty of Education as part of the URT's Verde Network continuing their work together and indeed strengthening Memorial University and the University of Arctic Networks. I hope you enjoy the sessions planned for the week, the cultural tours of our beautiful city, and the land-based experience on the East Coast Trail. Hiking is an amazing experience here. I wish you all the best. President, uh, Dr. Diane, Diane, there I go. Dr. Diane Timmons, President and Vice Chancellor of Memorial University. All right, uh, now, moving on. I want to uh, speak a little bit about Sam University, if I may. We, I visited Sam University, and I was so impressed in terms of we have a partnership with, with Nunavut Arctic College, and, and what I saw in Sam University to me is what Nunavut Arctic College should be. They were having their 30th anniversary in 2019-2018, and the the ceremony and the instruction and all the work is done in Sami language. An interpretation was provided for Norwegians and not me as an English speaker, which is okay. Uh, I've gotten over it, really. And <laughs> so uh, my dream at that time was that when we had a partnership with Nunavut Arctic College, someday, 20, 30 years from now, they would host their ceremonies in Inuktitut and translation would be provided for English speakers who didn't speak the language. And that's the vision piece that Sami University provides, I think, for the world for Indigenous peoples. Uh, and as I, I've said to you a few times, you're small, but you're mighty. And, and always keep the faith. If there's anything about indigenous people that we know in Canada and around the world for that matter, resilience is one of your key assets. Okay, so uh, I wanted to also mention, uh, we have a pro-rector, uh, which is like a vice president, I guess, okay? uh, from the Sami University in Ilna, Ilva. Yannick Nuti, and she's going to bring greetings on behalf of Sam University. Hilda? Hello. We are so thankful for the nice words and, and, and your nice welcome. And it was so wonderful to, to be here and just uh, see how you were collaborating and, and talking and laughing. It was really nice. And we are so, so grateful that you uh, take um, Take, uh, that we are able to visit you and you take time to be with us. And, and we, we, are, we are really grateful. And I, I see that uh, uh, what, what we also, we are really small. And sometimes when you are small, it feels like uh, it, it doesn't happen. It goes so slow. 
so getting to know that that you are you, you we are visible although we are really really small we have 200 students and here it is 20,000 so so there is uh, it it's also give us uh, a lot to know that that uh, we need to continue uh, to work and, and collaborate with others because uh, we develop our both our teaching and we are so impressed about this area and, and there's a lot to learn. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just a, uh, just a, a continued mention, we have a long-standing history since about 2012 when we uh, developed the Inuit Bachelor of Education program, we started working with the University of Arctic Moore as a faculty. And uh, many of us forged partnerships with the Verde Network and with the Teacher Development Network that's based in, so the Verde Network is based in Katakino, Norway, at the Sami University. The Teacher Development Network is based at C in Rova Naimi in the University of Lapland. And we continue those activities today. An example of, of how this works, and it's related in our, in our most recent Morning Watch Journal, is we'll, as a panel presentation, some of us will be presenting uh, our work at a World Indigenous Forum in Australia. It's called the, uh, the, the, sorry, the World Indigenous Higher Education Consortium. So we'll, we'll be sharing our research there. And the Sami University is actually a, a prominent member of that, of that group as well. I also want to mention that their logo, if you get to see their crest, uh, actually talks about the sun. It's a picture of the sun, and, it's support, and, it's, and, they, and the sun is important to the Sami people. This is very similar to some of the indigenous thinking for northern peoples as well. Uh, it's actually 24-hour darkness now in, 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 in northern Norway. Is that right? Or are we getting a couple minutes? In, 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 in the winter. In the winter. In the winter. Yeah. Not now. Okay. It's like yeah, June. <laughs> what am I saying? 24 hour daylight. Yeah. Okay. My clock needs to be adjusted. All right. Now. Having said that, I want to turn to our panel and, and introduce them as well. Um, well, we have a couple others I, I haven't introduced yet. Ida, you were introduced with the students. Sarah, where are you? Have I got the name of it? Yeah, Mina, okay, Mina. Yeah, okay. Mina, uh, you're here for, as, as you're, you do research in, in teacher education and, and practical work. Is that right? Do you want to say what? Okay, all right. And Hannah we introduced as well. Did I miss anyone from, from the SAMI group other than those two that are here? All right. Okay, let's go to the panel presentation. I'm going to put them on the spot. Um, what I'm asking is, is each uh, panel member take 10 minutes, share their, uh, their, their thoughts on northern education, teaching, and really anything that comes close to their heart. Um, and we have the first to speak with uh, Mina. P.E. Mina, how do I pronounce your last name, please? Nakala <laughs> Yarabi. See? Okay. So Mina, well, uh, it, it's, it's really interesting how I struggle as an English language speaker, one language, and we have multi multilinguistic people here, and how I'm, I'm struggling, and, and I, I am embarrassed about it, but, but uh, thank you, Mina, for rescuing me. Uh, she works at the Sami University. She's a teaching practice advisor, and she's got some research she's going to wear, uh, share about her work. Is that right? Yes. And second will be Barrett Ellen Margot Yuso, and she actually studied, she's, uh, she works with seven and eight-year-old children in reading proficiency and how they learn Sami language. And we have uh, Leela Evans, and Leela is the member for the House of Assembly, the Honorable Leela Evans, for Torn Gat Mountains. And uh, uh, big secret, Leela is a former student of mine, and we've known each other for almost 40 years. How's that? Is that scary? Sure, okay. And, uh, and I'm a, uh, you've probably seen Leela on television advocating for, for Labrador and for the North. And I'm particularly uh, 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 struck by her message and how structurally unfair some things are in our problems to, to our our most exposed peoples. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and I, every chance we get to share that, I think we should do that. Um, and she's a strong fighter for that. But she does not have to be alone. Right? We can sign up. Um, okay, and Dorothy Vandering. Dorothy is uh, a faculty member in social studies, but she's done a phenomenal job in building uh, concepts like restorative justice through the Relationships uh, First Network, which has developed a really strong partnership with Promise. And, uh, and she spent tireless hours doing just that. And I, and I pray that we can find a way to make Dorothy's work easier because it is really important to us and, and a lot is on her shoulders. But she's going to share some of her work as well. 
and Trent Langdon. Trent is uh, president Afternoon. of the Provincial Teachers Association and Newfoundland Labrador Teachers Association, and he has an advocacy edge about him as well. So, so we're really, uh, really happy to see that. And Trent will say a few words. And so, I, without any further ado, unless there are questions, if you need to pee, there's bathrooms at the end of the corridor and downstairs <laughs> one, one flight. Okay. Um, uh, who would I have first, Mina? Um, okay. Yes, thank you. Hello to everybody. My name is Minna Nakkelajärvi, and um, it is my Finnish name. And my Sami name is Erkon Tuoma Anne Minna Pirehellen. And it tells to everybody who lives uh, in the near my my living uh, my my home that I I belong to uh, one kind of reindeer herd family and um, uh, tells, it, it tells about them. Uh, I don't know if, if you <laughs> understood what I mean. And um, I was thinking that maybe I would take this presentation in Sami language because um, here is so much English. <laughs> and uh, I was thinking if, if Ida or Hannah could, could be my, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a great honor that we get to hear the Sami language, one of the dialects anyway, yes. spoken here today. And, and Ida, will, will tra Ida who will, will translate it, so we have to pay really close attention. Thank you. Yes. And I hope it lasts oh, only 10 minutes, <laughs> but I'm not so sure. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm just going to sit next to you. Yes. Tämä että Sami alla skola vuostas ohpahetti studenta. Mahvala manetse. That's the first group of Sami alla skola. You're really soft. Oh, that is the first group of Sami alla skola teacher education students. Ja mulle sen oktaain ja tässä oli jo aiki sulai kolmalla hetki. That was maybe 30 years ago. And Minna was one of them. Yeah. Ja tarko mulle Harjehan Landraan veatti Sami Allaskullas. No tälle mun ja tähkär haastelussa te mun sahtelin taitta studenta ja semmallakan vaasavussa ornet teko muusle tälle ko mulle sen ohpa heti. Yeah, much like it was 30 years ago, students are still coming here to learn how to be good teachers. And uh, as a practice advisor, uh, I find it uh, troubling sometimes to uh, uh, give them the, the same uh, experiences um, that, that I had uh, when I was a student. Mm. Uh, I remember when I was a student, when I was a student, I was a teacher in the school of 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 yeah, and so uh, I remember when I was a student, we uh, worked really hard during our practice um, at schools um, during my studies. Yeah. We hardly slept. We worked with the practice uh, our practice chores almost all the time. Exercises. Exercises. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Tälle kolmalohjakin tässä ei eilen ollut ollenkin saamme kiellä hohpumateriaalia. Te mitä käymme ja muistan Ousta Harjehalla, mä mitä käymme Sirmas Norkkaan peltä. So I remember one of our practice um, uh, experiences that we had in uh, Sirma uh, on the Norwegian side of Sami. Yes. Ja mi orume Suoma pelte tuon tuon joka Suoma pelte. So on the, other, on the other side of this river is uh, is uh, Finland. Ja mi orume toppe ohte joka on Akilachis. Um, yeah. Uh, on the other side is uh, Uxioka, um, where all of the teacher education students actually were this fall. Yeah, yeah. 
Se mi sir malay nupe pelte tuon joka norka pelte. Sirma was on the other side of this river. And ja mi taka me nua te mi hali na muotti pirra toko tenu salti pakte toko sir mai. So usually the road goes um, down the river and cross a bridge, but we decided that we didn't want to go all the way around and cross the bridge. Mm. No, me meri re me hahte mi suhka hiokke pei verasta to on tee nuut tohko sirmaskuuli. Ides tohko ja ehkä se voisi lohtua. So we decided each morning to row our boat over the river and each evening we row our boat back. <laughs> ja tällä ei ole, ole Eranomas, missä ei ole kalmas, tällä ei tsekkä, kun me manamme harjahalla miin muhto tuon, missä se puhkain takara um, Mahtan, että käydä silpaa skuuterdressa. Mm-hmm. Teko tämä näikin leitä taapalaisu? A snow suit. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. with the yeah. jacket, yeah. it's zip up. And yeah, it was really cold. Puff. It was uh, in the late fall. Ja, ja mille me vähän teko astronautta toppe? Sukaimet skuuli <laughs> ja pas rohtulutta. It felt kind of like astronauts in our silver <laughs> snowmobile suits rowing back and forth. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ja tästä tietysti Naam. Saamme kielas lehtä mankka suomana. Juhke saamme kielas lehtä mankka suomana. Um, in Sami there are many dialects and it's emphasized many dialects. Yeah, yeah and uh, there are also many languages and within, within each Sami language there are also many dialects. Joo. Um, Tuot ruksesta tiellä kuutoppele kotikeinu, kos alas kuulele. In the red circle is kuutikeinu. That dot is um, where alas kuulele is. Ja, ja sulai tuon riekkaa siskopelte puhka kulahalle. Tänne saamikelain, tavi saamikelain, viimeisle. Um, in the region surrounding, um, it's kind of like five, six area um, is mm. where conversation is in Sami, yeah. uh, where we are. Speak in the same northern Sami uh, language. Mm. Ja, poi manna tuon riekkaas. Te tadi eralaka ninta okta Sami kiela santa. So the further you go away from the circle, the more uh, the Sami language would differ. Mm. Ja, Tuo lehjohta loki saami kiela ja tää lehmiehtää norkkaa, ruotaa ja suoma ja ruotsapeli. Um, there are ten Sami languages um, and it's in, they are uh, sort of spread around Norway, Sweden, Finland and Russia as indicated on the map. Ja mi kohtuihtan saami? The name, but the name of this region uh, in the Sami language is Sapmi, uh, which is similar to Inuit Nunanga. I just, I was curious there, with, with the different types of Sami languages, are, would someone from one language understand the other, or are they very distinct and not like you would have trouble communicating with someone from another language? Tanvi saame kiela tu le nummar vihta. Ja mi sahti kal kulahalla nummar neljä kielain ja tästä toppe anaris tuona 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 kudes kudes kielain. Northern Sami is uh, the fifth area and we are able to without a problem uh, communicate with those living in uh, area number four and area number six. Muhto tässä tavatta se on kulahalla että teko ohtes kielain. Tämä on saamen kielakin. Munin välttikähtä ei niin tämän kiela. Inke tästä toppe tuon logeja, mille kuhkille pois. Well, and the two languages that are most difficult for me to understand is uh, the uh, South Sami, which is located in area number one, and Ter Sami, um, and probably as well Kildin Sami, which is uh, number nine and ten, because they are the furthest away from her language. Mm. Ja, ja, ja Suomas, kos mun puolta on toppe lehtä, Kolma, neljä, saamikieli. Nuortalais, so, anaras, tavi. Kolma. Kolma. So in Finland, where Minna is from, there are three. 
different languages yeah. Uh, yeah. that belongs to the Sami language family. Yeah, yeah. the Kolta Sami Gilla taught teachers. Tälle ennätteko Ruotsia? And uh, number seven, Gold Sami, uh, which is also located in uh, Finland and partly in Norway, if, uh, or it used to be, uh, is more closer to the, the Sami they speak in, in Russia. So it's very difficult for me not to understand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, yeah. 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 We just mentioned, um, and I'm sure, especially you, Lam, know this, since you're also kind of a language not like me, but. Um, the languages are very simple. The language grammat grammar um, can be quite similar, except the main thing to know is in Sami, we use cases. So rather than saying like, I'm going into a store, or I'm at a place, or I will go for, I'm, this gift is for you, um, the ending of the word in Sami reflects that. Um, so you would say like, mun lam uh, alas kuvlas. The loss is at Allah Skubla, whereas in English we would say at Allah Skubla. So um, in the different languages, they have a different number of how many of these you have and what the endings mean. Storimus Oasi min studenta, Harry Hallan Paikin, Lee Justeltuon Sami Horvon Koulus. So the biggest part of uh, where our students go through their, their practice is uh, located in uh, the Sami area. Mutta tämän päivän olu saamella, että mä olen maistuura kaupungin ja lulli ruosas, lulli suomas, lulli. But now a lot of Sami people are living also outside of Sami in the bigger cities in southern Sweden, southern Finland, southern Norway. Ja tämä mieltä puhutaan tämän, että minä fertti maitte Harihallan paikkiit ornetteko lohko, ko Sami horro. That means that we also have to. Sami kuul. That means that we also have to uh, arrange for practice areas outside of the Sami area where our uh, students and and the Sami population are living. Tämä ei näytä vaikka mille että unna al, mutta unna studentta, että mistä että mankkata kär unna osaa, mahkale kehteko. Hei ve hokti eh, huistora koulus ja huimanka gilli. That means that even though we are small people, there are a lot of details and, and different things that has to fit together. Uh, so that uh, might unlock the office. No, at the harja hala lihkostuva manka gilli ja manka koulus. So that the practice uh, will uh, be successful uh, in different, uh, for the different languages. Mm. Um, it will also for speakers of different languages, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. Joo. Missä takar kolmas takar oive prinsipa maina laki millä vihi ornetta arjehalla mit ja tälle erinomaiset tekoidaan vuodoskuulla oppahetti oppus. So there are three um, we have three main principles of, of how we are arranging our practice for our uh, students, which is mainly for the primary school teacher students. Mm -hmm. Ahte uostasiakin studenttain Harihallan kaksille lahkaa toppikossonle eire. So the first year they do practice, they go through practice, we arrange for them to be able to do it nearby their home place. Mm. Ja nuppiakin Harihallan kaksi saada huo toppe tälle ko olle saamis kospere. So the second year uh, it, ha it can be uh, anywhere in Norway, Sweden or Finland uh, where uh, people speak Sami. Mm. Ja tästä kolmahjaki Harri Hallan kalksille takarpaihkis, kos saamikielalle takar rasestilis tahe, tästä muhtin era alkoa kuulus. And the third year, uh, it uh, usually is in a place where the Sami language is uh, about uh, going distinct or uh, in another indigenous people's country or uh, play area. Mm. Yeah. Um, missä maanan kaarte ohpahetsi maittai ja sen letakar kolma ja ki bachelor school jumi. We also have a kindergarten teacher education education program which is a three year bachelor program. Ja ja tania ki vihta kehtal valamani tän tankida. And this spring there are five students finishing their education. Ja joo kindergarten teacher program. Ja ja 
Miss Le Hostashiagi student Tah Ohti. So there was eight? Nine. Ohti. Nine. Nine students that started out this year in this program. Miss Le Mashanta Harihalita student Tah Kauti. Kautsi Sierra Paikis, Harry Hallame, Suomas, Ruosas ja Norkas, ja, ja Kuoptenu blogi Sierra Manekartis. So the students went to practices uh, at eight different places uh, around Norway, Finland and Sweden, and in 12 different kindergartens. Outala tai Harry Hallamit, me lave tolla takar Harry Hallan Chokimit, ja Mangel Fasten tai Harry Hallamit, me sledakar. Harry Hallan seminara, because students are with the most in Harry Hallan the man. So before they go to practice, we have a meeting where we talk about the upcoming practice, and after we have seminars where the students tell about their experiences while on practice. Ja tuossa on niin pitkä tehtä lokuitte tehtä, että man kuhki lehtä Harry Hallan maha, että muista siellä kolmalogi vihta päivi tästä nielilogi ja so here on the screen you can see how many days uh, they do uh, every year, um, starting out with, uh, yeah, I should, I'm not going to read them out loud, but yeah. 35 days uh, for the first year, 40 days in the second year, and 25 year, uh, days of practice in the third year yeah. total. Yeah. And all of them um, in second and third year, they are in different kindergartens each time. Yeah. Yeah. That's the that Tampalas master students that might be stuck with the year school. So we have usually um, a five year uh, master education program. Mm -hmm. Ja sille hiukko juu on uh, teko ta ohta chiecha ja vihta logi. And they're divided into uh, two groups. One of them are um, becoming uh, teachers for first to seventh grades and uh, the second one fifth to tenth grade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ja Miss, tällä vähän, tällä vähän muutin jakin tästä studenttä teko valmani, numo kalleke muutun jakin tällä vähän vaatnata valmani minua te tällä vähän vaatis vielä muutu tässä just nyt sihkaris lopua te kalle studenttä valmani tän jakin. It's a bit difficult to say how many students will finish or graduate this year because some students graduate. Within the normal time frame, while others sometimes meet obstacles on their way and have to postpone a bit and graduate a bit later than originally planned. Yeah, yeah. To let that mean student local to get yankees to steal any bad date. So here are the numbers you see. The numbers you see here are from each each year. Yeah. How many that are graduating? Yeah. Yeah. Hello, come. They go up ahead, Jin. Yeah, yeah. And or reading, and or are reading become students now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Missä tänä kiille maan tietä siellä koulusta studentat. So this year we have had our students over at seven different schools around Sami. Yeah. Yeah. Tein maille maan teko takar harjahallan chokin outal harjahallan ja tästä mani okti dusta takar harjahallan seminaara kossi outan bukte ja just tehtä harjahallan. Ja muosille vaan siihen harjalla. Yeah, and as usual, they've had the the meetings before their practice, and we've had a total of one seminar after these practices, where the students have presented what they have been doing on practice. Ja tuossa on lokahalla tehtyistä, että mä kallen päiville leimasanti harjalla. Ja tietenkin siinä meni days they are in practice every year, which is each year except for the fifth year. Ja tästä. Ja täällä kovammin Harjahallan seminaarasta, niin tämä on paljon sohpeet jo, kun sille tämä on paikkiin alta täällä. Here you can see some pictures from one of the seminars we had. Students that are with us today from Sami University have been participating in this seminar. Joo. Ja missä vaattaa leitä oppilaavuus, millä tahmin arvevirrasta käydä potsotoalua Kuuttas tätä tätkö Suisa huolenka sami eli missä koska Suisa chokkana nu toppele tä Minecraft World. So we must learn to master the professor. We had our seminar in Alavu, which is a traditional Sami tent where 
a lot of uh, our culture has it um, has its origin um, and uh, in this tradi traditional uh, place our topics was topic was actually minecraft where our student Clement Mate was uh, one of our professors or <coughs> professionals yes <laughs> might I mention that Clement Mate has uh, uh, been translating minecraft into Sami just an oh. additional fun fact. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And next picture. And because we Sami people want to have some fun, also uh, <laughs> this is the the way we had fun. And in this this day, we have this reindeer. Oh yeah, tamula Okay. But me. Tämä kullaa tähän sahteko teivali te te pertelee muutumi mahi joita suhtasit ja minä la se hui suhtas kovin pesämme herki kuin muutti. So it also is a natural part of uh, our seminars that we're going to have fun together, and uh, on this particular sem uh, seminar we were uh, riding reindeer sledge, sledge and uh, also uh, having uh, lasso uh, lasso which is um, yeah, uh, is it the same in English lasso? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, oh, yeah. Kind of uh, competition where we were uh, trying to catch uh, reindeers, or yeah. I think um, Lemon actually speaks English better than I do, so maybe you want to come take over. I think you guys do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Ja, ja skola, skoli, att det är helt färre kuffkin, att skola med min min, min tampalas argapelis. So it's very important for us that we take the Sami culture and traditions with us in our everyday life and also uh, into uh, our education, so that it won't be too distant from us. Mm -hmm. Ja, ja det, ja, ja det är inte loppi, men valda måste toppa min Facebook sida och stänga filmarna. Ahte saat siitä teit muotte imutiele kanske outta jos valta ei kehtjanut tälle. But at the end here I presented uh, several links to our Facebook uh, different Facebook videos and if we have time I would uh, like to show one of them. Yeah. Right. See if so, I can get to work. Mutta siis tämä oli tätä. Tälle varaa tuo poster siitä sille viesti. Tapa. Yeah. Turn on extension or remove extension. Remove. Mutta toppele, kiva filmaa jättää, että tehtään nähä pitää kähtämään ja muutin osiin tälle jorkaluona, tähän tekstiluon ma henkilösti ja se kanava pitkä. So in our Facebook page you can see the logo up there, Sami Alla School, Sami University of Applied Sciences. We have a lot of different movies about the teacher education program and also our other programs. And um, Minna would um, uh, I recommend you to uh, drop in and, and check them out. Most of the, most of them, if not all, are translated or texted uh, into English. So yeah. For my students, if, if I have your permission, I will post this in your course shell so you can access it. Yeah. And, uh, and I'll see if I can arrange something with the faculty to get more broader access if, if people are interested. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
thing about working with translators is everything takes a little longer, right? So, okay. I'm so, sorry, uh, I never translated good. from no, Sydney before. That was, that was great. All right. Yeah. Um, okay. Now, next up we have uh, uh, Barrett Ellen, and she's going to speak a little bit about her work with seven and eight year olds and, and learning Sami language, which is relevant to anyone who teaches uh, an indigenous language, I think, as well as any other language. But, okay. Okay, thank you. Please. Hi everyone, I am Berit Ellen Juuso and I am from Finland, part of Sami and I, I work in Sami Alaskulla as a Sami language teacher. But uh, I have a couple of years ago started my PhD research and uh, in this study was to investigate reading acquisition among Sami-speaking pupils in primary school classroom contexts. And the study was primarily an examination of the technical aspect of reading acquisition. And in addition, in the development of reading skill was also examined. The role of characteristic features of Sami language like orthographical features. Testing was carried out from February to May 2019 before just before COVID in schools. Participants have read Sami as a first language mother tongue. In Finland and in Norway and in Sweden the pupil and children can can have the education in Sami language in primary school. So, so I I went to test how they learn to read in Sami language in Sami language. Participants were seven to eight years old at the end of the school year, and the my study participants live in Norway and Finland. In Finland they were 12 and in Norway they were 24. Altogether 36 participants. In the beginning of my study, study I designed a reading assessment test. The test is designed to take into account the characteristic characteristics of the Sami language. Sami letters, how they, how they learn to read and uh, decode Sami letters and sounds. Diphthongs, monophthongs, consonant graduation, vowel, consonant duration and so on. What I measured, I measured a letter sound correspondency, how they how do they know letters and how the, do they know sounds of letters. Then I measured also phonological knowledge, phonological decoding and memory. Um, results. The study uh, showed that on average Sami-speaking pupils learned to read Sami in the spring of the year in which they had their eight, eight birthday. So they learned similar age of the Finnish and Norwegian students or pupils. The respective visibility and frequency of the letters and sounds constitutes an important factor of the, in the development of the decoding skills. That means it is clear that uh, the linguistic environment has an impact on the development of the Sami language. When you are teaching indigenous language, as the Sami language is, you have to pay attention to language environment. The children don't hear the language so much, so it has its impact on reading skills also. And it has to be considered also in pedagogical decision. 
the more students see and hear the language and the letters and sounds, the better the students will know it. It was the um, clear result of my study. Uh, the teacher must have some awareness of of the of the teaching of indigenous language. With respect to, to reading acquisition, it is important to be familiar with the characteristic of the language and with the language's place in the community. Factors that should be taken account of when teaching pupils to read. It is also important that teachers are aware of all the various stages of reading acquisition. Uh, uh, the usefulness of the research was the this server survey tool that I I, I develop can help teachers in, the, in their everyday work and in teacher training also, as well as reinforcing and adding to the body of knowledge repre represented by the research into the learning and teaching of reading in the Sami language also. Um, so, that was very shortly because I have all, only 10 minutes <laughs> and um, yeah, that was about what I was going to, pre um, to present. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> if you have any question, you can ask. A quick question? Yes. Yeah, we, we'll save most of the questions for after everyone is finished, but, mm. but a, a quick one is good. Okay, we had, uh, I want to thank you for that, Barrett Ellen. Uh, it, it's really important work and, and uh, uh, teaching the language is, is, is very important. Now, uh, I'm going to call on Leela, uh, the Honorable Leela Evans, who's the uh, member of the House of Assembly for Torngat Mountains, uh, to say a few words as well. Leela, the floor is yours. Thank you. And okay. thanks for coming. I appreciate it. You know, actually, I think I might stand. Okay. I might uh, come over by you. Great job. I will be out. Yeah, I'm actually it's probably a little bit too short to stand actually, uh, but I'm gonna stand anyway just so I can see everyone there in the back. And um, I brought uh, some notes to keep me on track because um, a lot of times when I'm dealing with the issues, there are serious issues that impact the people in my district, and and sometimes it's actually heart wrenching. So I tend to sometimes uh, go on or just get diverted to another topic. So, so I thought this important to stick to the uh, stick to the topic. So I got some notes here to keep me on track. First off, I'm the MHA for Tongat Mountains. That's the most northern district in our entire province. My district is made up of only Innu and Inuit communities. It's indigenous communities. There's other people that live in those communities as well. But it's very, very important to, for people to understand that. So my district is entirely indigenous. Um, and of course, the theme is we're, t we're talking about education, we're talking about teachers and education. So I'm going to try to stick to that. Um, but when I talk in the House of Assembly, which is our government assembly for the province of Newfoundland and Labrador, I talk a lot about access to services and infrastructure that impact the quality of life in my communities, right? Because I don't know how much of the history even the Newfoundland and Labradorian students have of, of the Inu and Inuit of Northern Labrador, let alone the people coming from, from, from your area, from your country, countries, uh, plural. Um, but um, we have, unfortunately, a history of, um, you know, the word is um, intergenerational trauma, right? We had um, what the people across Canada are learning about residential schools, but also, too, is what a lot of people don't realize in this province, Newfoundland and Labrador, there wasn't just the programs 
of resettlement for the airport Newfoundlanders to bring them in to the urban regions for the, so they could have access to services. Um, we've actually had relocation, we call it, where um, people were brought into the church and told that they were going to be moved south, south uh, from their communities. And the reason why they were did that was because, you know, the government members and the church members, uh, the establishment knew that the Inuit would not speak out in church. So it was a way to silence them and, and actually get them to accept that they were going to have to move south. And they moved south to communities where they may not have known anyone. They were moved into little small houses. Sometimes there were multiple families in a small house with no, with no running water, no sewage. Uh, the, basically, these were Inuit hunters and fisher people. And they were moved into um, established communities where all the fishing birds were taken where the hunting areas were already established be between families. So it really impacted those people, right? And over time, a lot of them did move back further north, closer to, to where the original communities were, but they weren't, they weren't able to go back. So that, to us, that was really one of the major starts for intergenerational trauma. And unfortunately, in my district, Intergenerational trauma is not something we've talked about in the past, the past harms. Because of the lack of services, the lack of infrastructure, the lack of supports to the northern communities in my district, cycle still continuing, right? So it's important. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk a little bit about education. And I had a little, little quote here, and it says here, um, Labrador can't continue to be an afterthought. So what, what, like when you say something is an afterthought, it's after you planned and started implementing something, you start to realize, oh, we never thought of that. That's an afterthought, right? So just, I just, and I, one thing I'm always careful when I'm talking about issues and gaps and harm for my district, I always want to show you an example. Show you an ex show you an example. Um, Labrador can't continue to be an afterthought. Well, there I am. In the fall, school just started. September. School just started. And do you know what I heard? <laughs> this is the way I talk because. Um, I heard that high school students in our small communities that were relying on doing <coughs> online classes, CDLI classes, right? Center of Development, uh, what's it? Uh, learning Innovation. Yeah, Learning Innovation. So they were getting ready to do their online courses. But the province had decided that they were going to have any courses in Labrador time slots, the Atlantic time zone. They had taken mm -hmm. all the courses online and put them into the Newfoundland time zone time slot. Now what's the problem with that? First off, it's hard for families because in small communities you have to go home for your lunch break, right? So students were going home a half an hour after or a half an hour before. But the real impact to my students' education was they're there in their classroom. You're doing your course, you're doing your course. It might be an English course or it could be a social studies course. All of a sudden, if you were doing an online course, you had to get up halfway through the lecture and go and, reg and, and get online for the, for the online course. So you, let, you lost half your lecture. When you finished your online course, you had to quickly hurry up because in your school, the other course that you're doing next had already started a half an hour. So if you wanted to do any online courses, you're losing a half an hour of your regular courses, you're losing an, uh, at one end and on the other end, right? 
So I want to ask you now, as, as, as university students who's interested in education, as people here now who are teaching in universities, what message is that sending to our students in, in our indigenous communities in Northern Labrador? You know what it says? It says it didn't matter enough for us to actually take that into consideration and try and, and accommodate you. And so what I did is I was shocked. I was shocked. I couldn't believe it. I said, really? So I got a petition to present in the House of Assembly on that asking a return to Labrador time slots for the students. And the Minister of Education never stood and responded once when I presented my petition, because I presented it multiple times. Right? Labrador shouldn't be an afterthought. There's another thing I say too, and I, I need you to understand, because a lot of times I sound angry. <laughs> I sound angry. Mr. Kirk, <laughs> We used to call him Mr. Kirk. We didn't call him Mr. Anderson. He was my he was my teacher. He taught us math. I think it was last year I was there. Right? That was a long time ago. Um, but what what message is that sending also to the teachers who are trying to teach our students? What message is that sending to the parents? But you want to know something? Our parents already got that message time and time again. Right? So looking at that now, you're 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 missing your time. So what message does that send to the students? If a student is struggling a little bit, is that going to encourage them to do the courses? Because you know what courses are offered on CDLI, online courses. I went yeah, I went in as soon as, as soon as I heard that I went in and looked. The advanced math courses, the science courses, the English courses. You want to go into post secondary. A lot of times, the door will be closed if you don't have the courses. So if you're not doing the advanced math and you want to do a science course, you get ready and you go, you're trying to go in, you're not going to be able to do it. You know, you might, if you're willing to work hard and do the foundation courses and work your way up, you might be able to do it, but you're already behind. Right? That's why I got elected, boy. That's why I got elected. <laughs> Because the people in my district were so sick and tired of being an afterthought. You know, and I sound angry and I, you know, like I'm actually a very funny person. <laughs> I'm very humorous. I actually got a really, really funny per, uh, personality. People laugh. A lot of times now people don't know if they should laugh because they expect me to be so serious. <laughs> but I spend my time all the time upset. And I'm not angry. And like, like people would say, I'm doing this, I'm speaking on this, or I'm advocating for this because it's close to my heart. This is something that I care about, it's close to my heart, but you want to know something? When I'm in the House of Assembly, the issues I talk on, it's not close to my heart. It is my heart. I realize that. I grew up in McCovic. I got friends and relatives all along the coast. If somebody is impacted by a gap in health services, and become sick, maybe dies. Uh, if 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 students can't, you know, can, you know, are, are are being hindered where they can't succeed, and we see how wrong that is, right? It is my heart. My heart breaks every day, right? It's really really difficult. It's, it's a struggle, right? And it shouldn't be allowed in 2020. Now, we talked about the online courses. Let me tell you another issue students have to uh, have uh, have as a barrier. Teachers have as a barrier. We have trouble retracting and re uh, attracting and retaining student uh, teachers. Do you know what the internet speed on the North Coast of Labrador is in Trungat Mountains? In the capital of Nunatsibut, Hopedale, in in Nain, where there is the biggest Inuit community on the North Coast, in Napishish. The internet is at number one, number two, number three, number four, number five. When you go on the computer, more times than not, your internet speed will be 50 megabits per second to 200 megabits per second here on the island. In my district, when I got elected, it was 0.2, now one, 0.2 to 1.9 megabits per second on average. Now, 
our university students are here for MUN, right? The minimum requirement to do MUN courses when you go into the MUN website and look at it, it's three megabits per second. Sometimes we reach three, actually, in the evening when everybody is off or there's nothing going on early in the morning. You say, wow, this is fast. And you go in, you might be, you might be breaking three megabits per second, but 0.2 to 1.9. And when I got elected, and I got elected in May 2019, and I'm sorry, I'm not angry, I'm just hurt. I had a meeting, I got a meeting with Bell, because Bell was the internet provider, and the MP for Labrador, the Member of Parliament for Labrador. And we, I wanted to talk about this to see, because we needed better internet services for our students, our high school students, our university students. Oh, by the way, we have a lot of the teachers who teach in our communities do their masters. I, in Hopedale, uh, which is, uh, which is uh, a little bit more than halfway between Goose Bay and Nain, uh, in, in my district people are familiar with those communities. Um, uh, I got calls because the teachers couldn't do their master's courses. 0.2 megabits to, per second to 1.9, right? Um, so, so, like for for a teacher, like what would be your incentive to actually continue to teach her after you, you learn that, right? Now, this was before COVID, so I had the meeting, and there was there was federal dollars available. There was federal dollars, free money, for rural areas, remote areas, northern areas. We fell under all three, and I was there on, uh, talking with the MP for Labrador and Bell Alliance, the three, three, three senior management people. And they were discussing this money. It, there was a cost share to Bell. It was either 90% federal dollars and Bell had to contribute 10, or it might have been 70 federal dollars, 30% 30, 30 for, for Bell. And each region, there was areas in the South Coast that was actually, they were planning on money for to do upgrades, upgrades. There was money for Lake Melville, they were applying on for, for upgrades, Lab West, all these districts, and Northern Labrador. It was only the, the Torngat region, Northern Labrador, right, my six indigenous communities, they weren't even applying on the money. So I, I, here I am, listening to this, and I says, why? Well, we, we, you know, we have the worst internet. Not only that, it's the services, like a lot of times services will go out uh, and, and, and people wouldn't even have access to internet or the phone. We, we need it, we need upgrades. And in actual fact, they didn't know me because I had only been elected a little over a month. People know me now, <laughs> right? But honestly, I want to say the reason was the infrastructure was too dated. It was going to cost them too much, even with this huge amount of federal investment, this free money, it was going to cost Bill too much to do anything on the North Coast. And you know what I said? I said, okay, so it's too bad now, this is the way it talks, it's too bad now, too dated, too old, right? Too much work to, to, to get that money to do the upgrades, so what about next year? What about the year after? What about the year after that? If you're not going to do any upgrades now because it's too bad, right? You might have just put it in a boat, put it out in the harbor, and light it on fire and sink it, right? That's the, that was the attitude. And I was looking at the MP. We're part of Labrador. Why aren't you, you know, this is money from the federal government. Why don't you require them to do it if he wants the money for elsewhere, right? And then, that was 2019. What happened in 2020? COVID. COVID hit. What happened to all the students? The, 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 the students, they were either shut down and couldn't do their classes in their schools, in the high schools. They couldn't go to school. Or they started doing courses online. Right? Online, 0.2 megabits to 1.9 megabits. Right? It's being bumped off, being bumped off being bumped off, right? Like that, that's, that's, what I, that's what I deal with. 
when I talk about gaps in services and infrastructure, you know? And another thing is for students who are selecting their courses, they're coming up. Now you might have an older brother or a friend in, in grade 11 and grade 12, and you're starting to get ready to go and do your courses. You think a lot of the students are actually going to select these online courses after all the trouble? Right? Even teachers have, have trouble doing their, their, um, doing their work online, right? You know, they, they get bumped off. I, I hear the stories all the time. So for me, it's, it's quite difficult, uh, you know. And, and I'll mention another thing now because everyone thinks we're all going to be saved when it comes to online because we have now the option of Starlink. We have people in, in my communities now that have already ordered and received the receiver and the modem for the Starlink, right? Really fast, good quality internet. But the upfront cost is about, why, $800? About $800. There's a lot of families in my communities that don't have $800 upfront to actually, to actually get this service. And then it's $160 a month, right? So you know what's happening is people who are being able to access the internet and be able to avail of these courses and all that are people that are actually in families that have a better income. So how, how just is that? It's 2022, right? So this is what motivates me. This is what basically gets me up every morning, right? But it's difficult. It, it really is difficult, right? Now I'm going to tell you. I'm going to. I'm going to mention something else too about the cost. The monthly internet fee for Bella Line. I looked at my mother's bill um, at Christmas time when I was home. For this slow internet, 0.2 megabits per second up to 1.9 megabits per second, not even average in two megabits per second. And her landline. So just that phone and that slow internet. Guess how much her, her bill is? $160. He says $160. How much do you think? More than that. More than that. <laughs> With taxes included, her, her bill, there's no TV, nothing on the bill, just the landline and the internet. Her bill is $207 with taxes included. Right? So you know what a lot of people do? Some families who can't afford it, they go around or on the internet, right? But you know something? To me, this is about, it's not, it's, we, we always want to strive for equity, right? E equity, but we don't even have equality of services, right? And you know, I always say, and it was told to me when I was, when I was graduating, our youth are our future. But I got to say, the provincial me government's message to the youth in my district, the Inu and the Inuit, is really counter to that. So what kind of future are you expecting, right? So, like, I, I, I always, a leader told me, he said, Lily, you got to stop apologizing. Because I do apologize for my tone. I do apologize for my tone because I'm very angry when I talk about this. But you know something? More than that, I'm really hurt because I'm learning that since Confederation, since Joey Smallwood brought us into Confederation, right? My district never really had access to services and infrastructure. We never had the investments that the other districts had. And what's really, really upsetting to me is that the way we've been portrayed by government and the media is that we took what was given to us and we destroyed it. Our houses. Look at our houses, right? Look at our buildings. Look at our infrastructure. Well, they must have had it and they must have ruined it. Well, you know something in Northern Labrador now, you can't buy paint in the community. You have the order. And then you got to pay somebody. If I want to order three gallons of paint in name, I have to order from Goose Bay. And I have to pay somebody about $70, $90 to do the TDG 
so that it can be shipped. Then I have to pay the shipping and then the cost. And a lot of times in our communities, we're treated so badly by the merchants in Goose Bay that the paint we order is not even the right paint we ordered. When we order building materials, wood, it's got nothing to do with education, but it got to do with families. When we order wood, I can show you pictures where every stick of wood was cracked and rotten. How do wood rot? Moldy, right? And then for that person, they would have to take it and ship it back and try to get their money back and did have that incur the cost of shipping. This is all about marginalization. It's all about victimization. So you want to know something? In my districts, my students, my students suffer intergenerational trauma. And worse than that, we're blamed for it. Right? That's why I, 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 I worked in construction, mining, and I worked in a man's world, so I, 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 sometimes I'm a little in, I use the wrong, the wrong words, but people. You know, I ran in a liberal district. Joey Smallwood was still alive in my district. I ran in a liberal district where basically you had to be from outside and probably dirt off the floor not to get elected. And I ran against a liberal incumbent. You know, and they, the people basically voted for me. And that's what's happening in my district now. And I'd like to see it happen all across the province. Is let's stop voting blindly for parties. Let's start looking at who's actually going to be your MHA and what are they going to advocate for? And are they a decent person that's not going to be blinded by power? You put a, you put a suit on a man, you watch him change, right? When I went into the House of Assembly, you know, basically the cost of some of those uh, MHA shoes could actually feed a family for a week. Actually, more like a month, but actually on the North Coast, the cost of might be only a week, right? <laughs> But for, for me, the only way my district is going to get ahead is if the people in Newfoundland and Labrador understand and know the real truth in my district that my people are facing. You know, I'm talking about the youth, I'm talking about education. Don't get me started on our elders. I'm going to take two minutes, Kirk. I'm way over my time. But the cost of transportation, because you can't drive, there's no, there's nothing, there's no highways connecting my communities, right? And the airline cost is so expensive. The closest community to Goose Bay is Riglet. For a, a, round, a round trip now to fly from Riglet to, to, to Goose Bay and back is probably about $750 to $850. Nain is more like $1,000 to $1,100. So if our elder has to go to the nursing home, because the family can't look after them because of health issues or other issues. And finally, the elder, because we tre treasure, we cherish our elders. That's our grandparents, that's our mothers, that's our sisters. If they have to go to the nursing home in Goose Bay, a lot of people will never see them again because they can't afford to fly down to Goose Bay to visit them. If they're lucky, they might have a medical appointment that takes them to Goose Bay. Right? How traumatic is that? You know, like when you say goodbye to your elder that's leaving to go to the nursing home. And that is the truth. Right? So, anyway, um, I am a little bit of a downer, <laughs> my presentation, but the, it, it's really important for people to know that, this, this, this information, right? It's very, very important. But I'll stop there. Thank you very much. Um, it's hard not to get upset, and, and not, hard not to hear that and get upset. It is easy for us to go home and kind of place that somewhere else. Uh, for Leela, it's a lived experience for all of us. I, I, I think if it's wrong for one, it's wrong for all. And, and, uh, and I, 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 I think there's, a, there's such a powerful message there. In the, and I, I really enjoy the, the power that Leela has in her, in her speaking and in her engagement with people in the province. And one of the things, like I said at Sam University, you're small, but you're powerful. And since Leela has good humor, I can say this now. 
you're small, but you're powerful. Right? Five foot. And, and you will win out. It's the resilience piece. Keep the fight. Okay. Uh, I, I, I'm going to move on to Trent now because he's a, he's a fighter <laughs> for uh, teachers, and, and he's got a few words to share. Trent is president of the Newfoundland Labor Teachers Association, and he can say a few words. Yeah. Whatever you want to do, Trent. Yeah, I'll stand here if it's okay. Up to the side. I can see over the podium later. Uh, <laughs> I'll stand aside. My name is Trent Langman. I think I see some former students in, in the room of mine or went to my school anyway. Um, I'm president of the Newfoundland Labrador Teachers Association. We have about 6,500 teachers in this province, including substitute teachers. And I would have met some of you at our teacher induction ceremony just last week. Um, further to the latest comments and further to our friends, welcome by the way, welcome to Newfoundland and Labrador. Very glad to have you and everybody here. Um, we're very proud of Newfoundland and Labrador, but as Leela has said, there's things that we got to work on, and there's things that I think every area and territory and country needs to work on. Um, and that as part of the Teachers Association, our job is to support teachers in their helping of the teachers, or helping themselves, but also helping the communities. So we're advocates of, of what happens in, in communities as well. <clears throat> as you can probably see or presume, I'm white. I'm not going to make any apologies for being white. But I do have a responsibility to try and, and seek change. And uh, you may think I'm a middle-aged man, and I am, and I'm not going to make any apologies for that either. I've had, uh, I've had a lot of uh, benefit from being white and from being uh, a man and from now being middle-aged, and I get that, and I understand that. And I'm not just going to sit still and say, okay, well, I'll just go on and, and seek all of those benefits and live off those benefits. So as a leader of an association of 6,500 teachers, from all sectors of society, I have a responsibility to advocate on their behalf. Um, and when you become teachers, for our, our Newfoundland and Labrador teachers and our, our SAMI teachers, you're teaching the whole child, and you're teaching from the heart, and that's where it needs to be. Um, when I, I'm a guidance counselor, a school counselor by training, uh, that's what I do, and I'll be going back to doing that when I finish uh, as president. Um, you, you can't. I really enjoy the reading presentation because I do testing around reading disabilities and reading disorders, so I, I, I appreciate that. Uh, and I went to this university myself, so I appreciate the presentation about your university. And I hope, who knows, I actually taught a course here one year, I might, I might come back and teach again. Uh, but um, you have to teach the, old, the whole child. And as a guidance counselor, I see it every day. Kids are coming in, they're wearing the weight of their families, the mental health challenges, the trauma that Layla referenced. Uh, whether it's intergenerational inter trauma or something they experienced just yesterday. And uh, we can learn what we want here, but until you get on the ground and start experiencing things that, uh, that are, uh, is going on, whether it be in your neighborhood or in your, in your country, in your culture, because culture brings with it uh, satisfaction, it brings with it happiness, but it also brings with it pain. And we've got to make sure that those things are being covered. I was taking some, I was so impressed by what I saw, and I'm, this is a conversation, I can stay here all night, just a couple other points I wanted to say, is uh, further to Layla's comments, we met with her and the other MHAs from Labrador, because we <laughs> identified that Labrador is a very unique part of the province, and uh, no doubt there's rural parts of Newfoundland itself, the island, but it's, Labrador is unique in that um, it has its own needs that are separate from the island, and we've got to recognize that, and until government recognizes that, uh, and response to that, uh, there won't be any substantial change. So we're working with uh, our teachers in those areas because recruitment and retention of teachers in Labrador. So for the Newfoundland and Labrador teachers, if you're looking at getting a good solid start in your career, Labrador is certainly a place to give it a shot. Uh, and uh, and if not Labrador, the rural areas because we, we, we a lot of people are seeking to work in the city, um, and that might be your end goal. Uh, but the, what you'll learn in rural areas and what you'll pull out of rural areas in terms of building community and giving back uh, is second to none. I grew up in a town of a thousand people, so I know the value of, of small towns, and uh, I'll always advocate for rural. Uh, I'm not from an isolated area, so I can't speak to it, but I am responsible now to speak for those who may not be in this role. Uh, just not to belabor it, I guess, uh, it's not just the indigenous needs or the cultural needs, but there's lots of other needs you'll see coming your way as you become teachers. We, uh, uh, the racial piece, LGBT plus uh, concerns that, that kids bring to the table. Uh, you know, you have a kid walk through the door who may be non-binary, uh, whatever. 
you've got to be ready. And so the more you can learn up and above the reading, writing, and math, that's really what, what teaching is, and that's what kids will remember. Because in the end, the math will come or it won't. <laughs> it depends on the kid. Uh, but they'll certainly remember you for, for what you were able to, to see and uh, help them with in terms of balancing life and getting through life. Uh, the last thing I want to end off on is just the overall mental health of, of students and, and yourselves. Uh, you're no good to your students if you don't look after yourselves. Uh, teaching can be very heavy, no matter where you're teaching, rural, remote, or in the cities. Uh, but uh, if you look after yourselves, I know full well you'll be that much more strong to help out your students. So I'll end off on that note. And again, welcome from the Newfoundland and Labrador Teachers Association. Glad to have you aboard, and I hope you're all in classrooms very soon. Thank you. Now, see, with all of that, we'll go to our experts on rebuilding relationships and social <laughs> justice. Okay, so Dorothy Vanner, please, Dorothy. And I'll stand up, too. Um, do you want to find my PowerPoint? Yeah. Here? Thank you very much. It is a real, real privilege to be here and um, to follow up on all four of you. Um, I feel very honored. I feel very moved. I feel um, that our work, we are, we are living at an incredibly challenging time. We are working, we are living at a time in which we are at a crossroads. We have choices to make and we have choices to make of what it means to be human beings. Layla, I want to tell you how grateful I am for your words and um, the importance of that. And I would just like to begin that I have learned from Indigenous leaders here in the province that whenever they begin um, their talk, they often will start off by saying who they are and where they are from. And I would like to just say, my name is Dorothy Vandering. My father is Garrett Grievers. My mother is Berendina Grievers. Both immigrated to Canada in 1948 from the Netherlands. We are European settler Canadians who have benefited so completely from privilege even though my parents went through World War II, they came to Canada because this was a place where they could um, benefit from, from being a new, in a new country. And Trent, I thank you for beginning by acknowledging your whiteness, your maleness. I too am a settler Canadian. And what I say to my students is, I am a colonizer. And D the DNA of colonization runs through my blood from generation after generation after generation. The Dutch are well known, as well known as the English, the French, for their colonization. And I find it such an incredible gift to be in this room today where we are learning that we have to create space for indigenous leadership in this world. Indigenous people, I think, as, as Kirk said, are incredibly resilient. But you know what? I've heard many indigenous people say, stop telling me I'm resilient. Just start doing something to work with. So the work that I do, and um, it could be a long story as to how I got here, but ultimately I have been challenged in my life to deepen how my history has caused harm, how my traditional faith tradition has caused an incredible amount of harm, and what our responsibility is in education. Chief Justice Murray Sinclair said, education got us into this mess with residential schools. Education has to get us out of this mess. But what really is education? And so over the years, I've confronted a number of things. And this is one of the things where in my research with restorative justice education, it has landed me. It has brought me to relationship with indigenous people. 
and I speak to our students in particular, the significance of understanding the harm that education can do is the key thing we have to learn. And it's going, it's not, colonization did not happen in the past. Colonization is happening today. And you are witnessing the stories of what's going on today to further marginalize and further marginalize. Um, I will um, just very quickly run through um, the foundations of the work that I do. I teach social studies for primary elementary students. And one of the key things that we talk about in social studies is that we have to put the social back into social studies. We've taken the people out of social studies. We have to put the social back into social studies and we have to understand oppression and how education oppresses. And education can also free, but we have that responsibility, especially those of us who are colonizers. So my work is in restorative justice education. It's about moving education systems from being rule-based to relationship-based. And at the core of that is the seed of restorative justice is how we, what we believe about what it means to be human. And I am convinced that in our Western education systems, we have stopped talking about what it means to be human. And because we've stopped talking about what it means to be human, we allow ourselves to continue to harm and oppress people. And you go the next one and the next one and the next one. So the seed of restorative justice believes that all people are worthy, they are relational and interconnected, and that our well-being is nurtured by one another. And I think Trent, you said it, or Kirk, you said it. If one of us is suffering, we are all supposed to be suffering. And if we don't think we are, then we're blind to it. Next one. And just click through a bunch, because there's. So the values embedded in restorative justice are respect, dignity, and mutual concern. Respect being that we need to look at life from the other person's perspective. So to hear these perspectives is, is critical. To hear Layla's perspective of what's going on in Northern Labrador is critical. Um, dignity, we have to honor each other as people with dignity. There is no one life that is more valuable than another life. There just isn't. Simply because we live and breathe, we have dignity and worth. And then we need to learn what it is to care reciprocally for each other. So that those are the core beliefs and values of restorative justice. Next, we'll click through a bunch. So oftentimes we think about justice and we think about it in the social justice kind of sense, but we always think about justice more prominently as right and wrong. But restorative justice is about primary justice, where we are nurturing worth and interconnectedness, where we um, learn that no matter who we see, no matter where we are, that, no, that everybody is worthy and interconnected. And secondary justice, then, is that when harm happens or when people are pushed to the margins, that secondary justice is about reestablishing worth and interconnectedness. So, you know, taking the interconnected idea about internet in the north, is that there's nothing just about what's going on with that. There's nothing, right? And so education is about nurturing worth and interconnectedness, challenging each other to say, how do we really see the person who is different than us? And then when I cause harm, when I perpetuate difficulty for you, Layla, and your communities, then I need to work on reestablishing worth and interconnectedness. Next. So in restorative justice education, it's about every aspect of education, OK? Where everybody, this is the core. And it's basically got three key things. We work towards creating just and equitable learning environments. We nurture healthy relationships and we repair harm and transform conflict. Not one of these is more important than the other. Okay, But this 
creating just and equitable learning environments is something that we often overlook or push aside. Next. Um, keep going. So, yes. So we live in a world, our Western world, is a very individualistic world that says it's about survival of the fittest. But restorative justice, the way we see that it's about, it's about how do we live together. It's not about making it to the top. It's about how can we be together. And a lot of our work is done in circle. Next. So what is being restored in restorative justice? Dignity, worth, and interconnectedness. Okay. Ultimately, hope is being restored. That's what we're working towards. And I want to pick this. I was almost going to skip this, but because of what Leila said, I thought, no, this is excellent. So what we're doing in restorative justice, in social studies education, in all aspects of education, we're saying we need to take off our glasses, our perspectives of the world, where we measure people. And we say, hmm, I wonder what's Kirk been up to or look at the look at his shirt you know where we're always measuring <laughs> what he's doing or what the other person is doing or what they're like and so restorative justice education says we have to take off those lenses that measure and instead put on lenses that honor how can we put on a pair of glasses so that no matter who we see we're going to honor them and not presume we know them or what they need. And then the last slide, I think it's the last one, here. So with measuring glasses, we ask the question, or I often say when I'm working in whatever I'm doing afterwards, I think, do people feel like they were measured? Do they feel like they were honored? What message, what message am I sending? What message am I sending? And Layla, you said it over and over again. What message does she have to go back over and over and over again to her community with? So ultimately, the restorative justice in education relationships first, there's a lot that I could go on about that we've been in existence for 10 years. This year, we got some significant funding from the government to actually move this forward in education. Okay, so ultimately what we're doing is we're working good people to decolonize, to create spaces for indigenous leadership, for leadership of marginalized people. And one of the ways that we did this, um, actually there is one more slide, was through a conference. That a lot of our work kind of came to a head in November. It was called Two Eared Listening for Deeper Understanding. And with a planning committee, we met uh, Chief Missile Joe um, from Miapakuk First Nation, mentored us for two and a half years. Because he was part of a panel discussion in 2019, I think it was, on restorative justice. And he said, you want to know about restorative justice? He said, just ask. And I remember about four to six months later, he was here on campus. And I went to him and I said, Chief Joe, I'm asking. I said, I want to know about restorative justice from your perspective, not from a white colonizing perspective. And so graciously, he mentored us for two and a half years till we had this event called Two-Eared Listening for Deeper Understanding. And he coined the term two-eared listening. And some of you may have heard the term two-eyed seeing, um, where you need to understand where um, uh, Elder Marshall, uh, getting his first name. Um, he talked about two-eyed seeing as being, as benefiting from both indigenous perspectives and non-indigenous perspectives in terms of the science world. Two-eared listening, this is what Chief Joe said, to understand justice, he said, you need to hear the stories of injustice 
He said, you need to, um, as he continued, he explained that when you hear the stories of injustice, you hear people sharing how their day-to-day -day lives have been disrupted, harmed, and destroyed, how the essence of who they are individually and communally has been assaulted. In both the sharing and then the listening with two ears, every part of us between these two ears, every part of us is engaged. Okay. And so he was saying, often in a non-indigenous community, you want to rush to justice. He said, you can't rush to justice unless you stop and listen with two ears to the stories of injustice. And so we needed to hear the stories of today. And then we have to change education because education is still causing a lot of harm. That's really different than all my notes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, everyone was right on time. I thank you for that. <laughs> okay, uh, we, we you heard I think some really good perspectives and and uh, and, and in some cases I mean it's things we need to know. Um, are there any questions, uh, Chris? Uh, I've put you on the spot, but one thing I was wondering is uh, if any of the students from Sam University of you would be willing to just speak about um, your experience at Sam University specifically, how it might differ from like uh, a un another university in like Norway, Finland, or a similar Sweden or a similar country. I'm not. If none of you don't feel comfortable with it, that's fine too. But I am actually pretty curious about. Uh, it seems like a unique place, and I'm curious what it what it's actually like to be a student there. Okay, so um, we we have secretly been messaging each other now uh, <laughs> about that. So we would like to ask if we could show uh, two videos of about eight minutes total. From our university and our learning. Do you have time? Yep. <laughs> I'm game. I, I, let's see if we get any, any more questions first, and then uh, you, 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 can you find the address for us? Yeah, I can. Okay. Okay. So, any other questions while we're setting that up? The bonus presentation, right? <laughs> Student rebellion. It's pretty good. Okay. And I don't know this one. I make a really uh, strong conclusion that. Because you're not asking these folks any questions, there's definitely not a lack of interest in anything they said. I, I know it's, there's power in the best. Dr. Anderson, uh, uh, yeah. with utmost respect, I have to leave. And yeah. Welcome again, but I would love to watch, but my children are calling. I need a problem. All right. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you, Trent. I really appreciate you being here. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. It's very sweet. I appreciate it. Okay. All right. Thank you all. Okay. Uh, Bye. -bye. It, one of the, we, we talked about two-eyed seeing and two-eyed hearing, two-eyed listening, sorry. And, and this is a really important concept because it strikes uh, the notion of, of that there are two peoples in different places, many people certainly, but the idea of multiple perspectives. Uh, one, of this research, one of the schools we did research on in the north, uh, they actually, their motto was strong like two peoples. Yeah. So instead of actually a conquest of one over the other, they wanted to be strong like two people, peoples and, and embrace our strengths. So, um, it's good. And any other questions? Yes, Ben. No, I'm curious Maybe about uh, your perspective on sort of cultural uh, backlash or oppression versus you as, as a group or as a people. Because here, I, I'm unfamiliar with sort of how you've experienced that. Um, here, it's very obvious as to how sort of like oppression and prejudice is. Uh, comes from the top down. Is it like that where, you, where you're from? That's to uh, uh, Amina or... or, or uh, America. So uh, do you, the sense of being oppressed, uh, of being a marginalized people. Right, the very, very, very the commonplace prejudice here that happens all the time. Ja, tällä hetkellä tässä on sama fenomeni tuppe Suomessa. Mä ihmettä, mii taistel ei ole kepeivä min riuhti houti ja min kiela houti kulttuura ei ole huusa houti ja tiuske puhlakan sisäpahke, mutta ehkä min 
Arpe Virolas eli mä teko potso to ollu. Teko vasta semponaa. Just as that unfortunately we have much of the same phenomenon in um, uh, Finland where uh, Inna grew up. Uh, both when it comes to languages, um, culture, and uh, especially also when it comes to traditional um, uh, livelihoods like reindeer herding and all the sisapakemit. Uh, no, uh, basically, the material colonization that is still happening, like uh, Chopping down woods, uh, our forests, mining, mining uh, ruining our fishing areas, windmills. Windmills, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, unfortunately, it's the experience much, much of the same. Mm -hmm. But uh, but we have this uh, international cooperation with Sami people. So we we learn by each other and we support each other so we can um, be all the time we are aware, aware of these uh, threats mm. all right any other questions thank you Ben others I'm two for two on names now you, I hope you notice that right? <laughs> okay. all right um, okay so um, yeah. Jovna and Lamet are going to uh, show us a video. So let's just have a look. Okay. Yeah, first I was going to say before we start that um, in uh, our studies we get to choose three subjects that we're going to be teaching after we are finished with our degree. And most of us we have um, picked languages, math, science, um, and so on. And since nobody chose to study music, our school thought it would be a uh, very great, great idea to send us to a music academy for a week. <laughs> and um, most of us, at least not myself, uh, we don't have a, a musical bone in our body. <laughs> <laughs> and in this academy in Finland, we were supposed to learn how to use music, uh, instruments, rap, joik, and sounds in our teaching. Um, and I don't know if you have heard Sami music or Yoik before, anyone? From Canada, not you guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, so you will hear some of it here, and um, I hope it explains a little about what Sami music is. I don't remember. Uh, we have just gotten the video. It was filmed um, in November. And it's been a long process to get this done. And it was quite a surprise for a lot of us when uh, a, ca a camera crew showed up <laughs> um, and told us we are part of this Verde uh, project, which is why we are here. And at least I didn't know about this project until then. <laughs> so um, hopefully you enjoy this video. Hey, I'm not a 
hetkellä opalahka mun vaimu. Tätä muistuuha puoli maatkipirra. Mä jahtsin laimä uutsin toko käsorhatki, kuuntelemme luulia. Ja tässä hui, hui liekka käsä muistut. Mä mun päräs joika ja mahtsi mun Ja siis samintä ja mutta no asi Mä mun kohti iäsiin tautta tällä on tjärpi joika, mutta hän oli ihan ohka. Ja mä oon sillä vielä kultalihta ja kuores päättiin, mutta tiedän mun suos kaunihti. Kohta päättiin mun uskoilla ja mielellä kulta ja 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 siis lähellä myös on joikan luopahus, ahvan laulun tekniikka on ässi. Sitten päässä vähän aini muosat si garagebänd kevätti huopahtusas ja muosat si räppi kevätti huopahtusas. Ja te sillä, että parkamen etsäset maina siihen, kun osa siikalki kevätti eskuudella jienä ja, ja, ja laulu joikat ja, ja raakkavitta save on ohtallaan kevätti chalunsa. Mun päivin äsken. Ja ei käskellä muu ollut jäljä ja kaappa, kun ammun voikin tässä. Ei tuu kauhean luohtia, mä saan kuin. Jos me tulen päättämään, niin on paljon tjonna. Mä en lähde mun rahti ohpe, sä mikin ja vai. 
Sami Kiela ja tässä kuuntelevat Kiela jatkaisuva ja siirtasuva, että ei voisi olla vasta. for your attention and I hope you learned a little something about Sami music and if there are any questions I can try to answer <laughs> with the help from others. Yeah. I'm just wondering about your education program in your small university. Mm. How does it compare to the, the mainstream universities? Uh, and that's not specific to the music. Yeah, yeah, but I just, um, well, if you ask me, I think it uh, compares that we have um, a lot more uh, student-teacher relation ratios, mm -hmm. so we get more follow-ups. Uh, it's also easier for us to uh, change the schedules if it's necessary. And um, we uh, became uh, become a very close uh, knit group because we are not as many students. Answered your question. Yeah. Question. I don't. Know. I could add something. Uh, I am, as I told you, or as Patrick told you, I am from the Swedish side, and I choose to go to this university in Norway because I could have um, choose some of the universities in Sweden, um, but then I wouldn't be able to. Um, have the education in Sami, and maybe I could have like take a course in Sami and uh, probably like teach in Sami as well. But now, like the whole education is in Sami, we learn maths in Sami, pedagogics in Sami, so at least for me, it's very and I'm very grateful for the school and to be able to go there. Yeah. Um, yeah. For uh, when you guys are making music, are yeah. there any traditional Sami instruments that you use? Yeah, we have this uh, drum, Naudaskade, uh, which is made from. I need some help. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, skin. yeah, the skin, and it's um, from the old Sami religion, before Christianity. Um, and that is used as an instrument. Yeah, that, that's the picture of it. And the symbols represent um, the Sami gods and also the sun and reindeer. And that is, uh, to my knowledge, the only instrument we use. And also the yoik is... Uh, uh, it's a traditional way of singing using your uh, voice and it can uh, remind a little bit about other indigenous singing and music as well. Yeah, Inga Meret is saying that Lemmachte has made his own instrument, instrument using reindeer horn. 
Yeah. I think it, you could see it in the video, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he was using it in yeah. the video yeah. as well, yeah. But that isn't, it isn't a traditional instrument, but it's made uh, with traditional handcraft. So that's a way of adapting uh, our uh, culture into the more modern area uh, when we actually need instruments and make uh, music that may uh, resemble more uh, the larger community's music. So it, it's a way of continuing our traditions and our culture. Um, we also have this one. This will be the last one, I promise. <laughs> Uh, but uh, at our university, we also believe in uh, visual learning and also uh, practical learning, like doing stuff. Um, because by doing, you also uh, connect your uh, the information to the place and also to the activity. So therefore, it's easier for our students or our um, pupils to recall the memory of uh, the projects we have had. So one of the projects that uh, we have been through at our university was going to uh, fish in the sea because there's a lot of learning there. You have to cooperate with everyone on the trip. Uh, you have to learn uh, a lot of the words and terminology connected to the ocean. Uh, and also by, by working physically, you also learn how to be physical, right? And that's uh, things that are needed for having a good physical and uh, mental health well-being, as um, uh, some of uh, the speakers here told earlier, that mental health is really important. And that's also one of the main uh, ideas at Sami uh, Allah School, is to have a, a close connection to nature, which therefore also correlates to having a good well-being. Because we have experienced by being colonized that cities uh, and a lot of noisy areas will affect you, first mentally, but then also physically because you have so much trauma or stress in your bodies. So I can show you the video and after that, if you have more questions, we can try to answer them. I never be with you, Connor, but they have got to have You never be too cool, you
Teaching was happening uh, outside, uh, yeah. And uh, as I've said earlier, we believe that uh, outside learning uh, has uh, a lot to do with memory, and uh, it's also a more natural way of learning because it can become too sterile inside of a classroom like this. Even though this is very modern and great with the uh, different sections and groups. Uh, I would also um, recommend. I would also recommend you to try to take nature more into your teaching styles, because with uh, being outside, you also understand nature and why uh, and how it can be affected by industrialization, of, like factories. And uh, you know, the world is becoming more and more. Um, environmentally friendly and we, we are thinking like uh, electric cars will solve every problem but then we have to think about where do we get the batteries from they get gathered the minerals from mines okay mines ruin the area around the mine therefore the area is uninhabitable for animals but also people for uh, a while and what we often uh, feel is that okay they are saying that, okay, the mine will only be there for, for 10 years. Then we will leave, okay? We just take the earth, dig it up and go. But then you forget the 50, 100 years with contamination in the area around that makes the area uninhabitable. So this is a lot of the reflections and thinking that we have at the university, how the world is affected by our doings. And that we only think you can get through being in nature. So thank you a lot. Well, I'm delighted. I don't know about you guys. Uh, are there any further questions? That, that is wonderful, Emma, and and and, uh, and and it's good to see all these people who were so shy a few days ago now uh, coming forward and speaking. It's a, not that you're shy. Okay. Um, any questions, Ben? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, it's not really a question. I just want to say I love everything about that. I think that's a wonderful way to teach. Uh, I fish and hunt, always have. My family goes way back. We have generations of game wardens and wildlife protectors in our family. I just want to say that was an awesome thing to do, and I wish we could teach like that. 
here. I think that would be hugely beneficial to kind of get to our, our roots where we come from. It is true. Experiential learning is, is our way back to the future, right? Do we have over here? I was just going to say, um, before I forget, there was some interest I know on Tuesday with perhaps some of the student, some of you folks getting together with some of us. And I know, I think Eric in particular had some ideas of maybe making that happen. So Eric, you, you would organize some stuff, right? Yeah. Put it together. So if people want to maybe uh, chat with him, I'm going to volunteer you for that. So, uh, yeah, maybe uh, if there is still interest. I know you guys only have a few days left. But, um, I think some of us, it will depend on schedules, but I think a fair number of us are pretty interested in getting together informally. You guys want to, but also don't feel obligated to hang out with us. Okay. <laughs> Ilva? Ilva? Okay. So wonderful to be here. Yeah. Uh, and I need to say, it is, uh, I feel really, it really, it's really nice to be here. But of course, it's wonderful to hear uh, the students at some University of Applied Science tell about uh, what what they learn uh, during their teacher education. Uh, I guess uh, almost uh, it was really, really nice to see and see how you collaborated, both uh, giving, even if you are not up there and presented, you give some instruction. Uh, so it was really wonderful. Uh, but I also have a question. It's, it's uh, awkward to have a question to your own colleague. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> That's why. Yeah, to be the uh, uh, to be, be the uh, because uh, when you did your presentation, it was a question about how do we uh, do we experience uh, racism and that kind okay. of thing. And I, I thought about your presentation. Uh, you you to told about that uh, they learn to read and write if they get to read and write in Sami. Could you talk about that? Because I think it's connected to the question. Might have made it here. I mean, I at the Ikulemanga Sami work with my egg was so it's very before the lock. Yeah, oh, okay, yes. yeah. now I get it. <laughs> yeah, there are many pupils, those don't get to education in their own language. It is, it is almost just in the main area of Sami, where you can learn to read in your own language, in Sami language. It isn't... Uh, you can't learn in Sami, by Sami language, to learn in, uh, in Helsinki you can, but in, in other area, in Finland or in Stockholm or in Oslo, I don't know if there is, if, if there is a teaching in Sami language, but it isn't so, so, how do you call it? Yes, chilkas. It isn't automatically you can have education in your own, own language. And and we are both parents, so we know this reality mm -hmm. that we have to all the time beware of the if we are not uh, uh, awaken. Yeah, and we we don't take care of this uh, language, so it is uh, very useful that uh, municipalities don't uh, organize some uh, teaching in Sami language or or nothing. So we we have to be all the time in the, uh, awake mm -hmm. with this thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so Eric and Chris, you guys were working on something connecting. So, uh, will I just leave that, or and, and and let people reach out to you? Is there a contact point you have, or? I got it. Sophie's on. Okay, all right. Uh, they are kind of booked tomorrow morning, and they are kind of booked tomorrow afternoon, and there's a little bit of stuff going on on Saturday. But they know the schedule, and the schedule is posted up on your your course site too. Uh, there is a kind of a networking session that we're going to have at Canada House at, at my place tomorrow. 
and you guys are welcome to come. So, you know, we've got lots of space. Hopefully it's not raining because you're not getting in the house. I've seen how you, some of you guys are in class. But, uh, just kidding about that. But I, I'm hoping we can have a little bit of snacks and stuff, and, and, uh, and that'll give you a good chance to mix. And, and uh, maybe if you bleed off downtown somewhere, you, you can... Uh, oh, my. I don't want to get anybody in trouble. I just spoke to you. Okay. All right. So uh, I want to thank everyone for uh, just a wonderful, wonderful experience. And, and, I, and I want to thank our speakers, too. Trent is gone. Uh, Dorothy, uh, it was a really good capstone piece. Rhonda, for a really busy schedule, you came and you spoke and you stayed. Thank you. Um, I was really glad I did. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Mina and, and, and Barrett Allen, again, uh, really powerful and, and really meaningful that you spoke in your language. And, and Hannah and, and, and Ida with the translations, really well done. And uh, Leela, again, your message of passion uh, for Northern Labrador and for fairness and justice for people in this province is not lost on, on some of the voices, you know? And, and one of the things, the strengths that Leela brings is she always seems to have a teaching message. And yes, she does sound angry sometimes. And advocates, advocacy, people who actually fight the good fight sometimes sound that way. And, and it's really hard. You have to get back to your soul sometimes and not be the angry person in the room all the time. But the good fight has to be fought. So take care of yourself, Leela. You do have friends in strange places. Okay? <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you, folks, and, and we'll see you a little later.